So they threw me into the paddy wagon. As I got to the paddy wagon, one of the cops grabbed my testicles from behind and squeezed. And I went to the paddy wagon in gigantic pain. And uh, the next person that came into the paddy wagon, the cop, as he was stepping in, the cops took the bullet cop, smashed him on the head with it, and just killed his skull. You know, for no reason. I mean, there was nothing wrong. So that was kind of your wake up. my wake up. Like, what is going on? And then uh, uh, a week or a week or two weeks later, I forget exactly what it was, uh, two, two cops come to see me, a lieutenant and a, and a sergeant, and a captain and a sergeant. Mm -hmm. And they said, Mr. Russo, we're sorry if you got hurt that night at the club and the raid, but uh, we're here to tell you that if you want to keep the club open, it's going to take uh, $2,000 a month, and we can come see you once a month, and whenever we have to raid you, we're going to call you. You know, and we'll let you know we're going to come in tonight and raid you. This was mafia. Uh -huh. Well, the police mafia. Yeah. You know? And uh, actually, it was actually actually more interesting. Now. They said, listen, there's the A plan, there's the B plan, and there's the Super Deluxe plan. And this one, of course, each one, of course, that much money a month. Which one do you want? What was I, the Super Deluxe? That's the one I took. That was a 2000 a month plan. And I took that plan, and um, I paid them $2,000 a month, and they left me alone. And whenever they were going to raid the club, they would come there, we were going to raid, we have a phony raid tonight, you know, just to look good for the people in the neighborhood, you know. So that was your first big education? That was my education into corruption in government, you know. But I really thought that was basically Chicago. I didn't realize it was the whole country was like that. And so that was my wake-up call, that people lie and cheat and steal. And uh, I thought everybody was always honest and nice and decent and... Uh, I had no idea about any of these things. Finally, one day they came to me, and they said, look, we, we, we can't take your money anymore. I said, why, what's up? What's going on? I said, we have to close your club. There's elections coming, and the alderman and the neighbor don't want you open anymore. So we can't take your money. So I had to go to court and fight them, and, and they were trying to close the club. And then one night there was a fire, and the club never reopened again. There was, they, the club just closed, and that was the end of the club. And they, they, they burned me down. And that, that was the end of my experience. And then I moved back to New York, where I met Bette Midler, and uh, I uh, ran into her at a little uh, nightclub she was playing called The Improv, and I thought she was fabulous. And through a series of events, I began managing her. And as soon as I started managing her, her career took off like a rocket. You know, it was just fortuitous, I guess.